So I want to talk about modelling. NLP, as I said yesterday, uh, comes from uh, modelling. And NLP was created it, by two people, John Grinder and Richard Bandler, uh, in the 1970s, early 1970s, when they sought to unpack patterns of human excellence. And for those of you who are here um, in this course, you'll know that the three primary models for NLP was Fritz Perls, Virginia Satir, and Milton Erickson. Now, it's, as I said yesterday as well, it is a myth in NLP that John Grinder and Richard Bandler sat uh, and studied with sort of pencil and paper instruments their, the behavior of the people they were modeling. They did not analyze it analytically from first while the behavior, but while the behaviors were being exhibited in front of them. They just didn't do it that way. Nor did they sit there and asking lots of questions, eliciting their, the, the, the models of excellences, values, um, or asking them questions about their choice of behaviors while these people did their uh, therapy and change work. Fritz Perls um, was the founder of Gestalt Therapy. Uh, Virginia Satir was a family therapist. Milton Erickson uh, was probably the best hypnotherapist of his time, if not the, the, the last century. You know, so they had these access to these incredible people. But they didn't sit there and say, okay, Milton, whilst you're doing this, what are, you know, what's going on inside? Why do you think they didn't do that? Why do you think Bandler and Grinder didn't ask the questions of their subjects? Yeah. Well, also, the subjects wouldn't be the type of people who would tell them, number one. But number two, the subjects didn't know. They were excellent. They didn't know. Or if they did know, which Virginia Satir used to teach, they had a disconnected map from what it is they actually did do. So what they thought they did could be at odds with what actually occurred. So what did these Bandler and Grinder do to assimilate these patterns? What was it they did in their key models, key modeling projects, do you think? And after observation. Well, they mirrored it. They did a imitation. So prior to Grinder getting involved, there was actually Puswick and Bandler. And the context was, as I say, early 1970s, California. Um, Bandler had been exposed to quite a lot of Fritz Perl's material. And people who had access to both Pearls and Bandler, actually say Bandler was better at being Pearls than Pearls was himself. Bandler had unconsciously assimilated <coughs> Pearls' patterning through imitation. It's like a child, right? I'm not saying Bandler was like a child, a child learns that way. He could do a perfect impression, copy, mimic of Pearls as could Puslik, who had got the pattern in from Bandler. So you had these two young men on the university campus doing gestalt therapy, just like Pearls. One of the differences was they didn't have the 50 or 60 years of experience that Pearls had. had. They didn't have all the historical aspects that Pearls thought was necessary. They could just do bloody good gestalt therapy. They had assimilated the pattern. There was only one problem with that, though. What do you think that was? Uh, yeah, sort of. Filters. Experience. They got a lot of experience. They used to run distort classes. Well, they sort of, not quite. Well, they didn't need it ingrained in their values and beliefs. The way, way Bandler and Grinder worked was that they didn't actually 
subscribe too much to values and beliefs. They just did anything that they felt like doing, purely act as if. Their model was if you act as if, the values and beliefs are irrelevant. Um, I don't know about the bad things. They had the whole lot, uh, the whole shebang. That's, they had a lot. They too were like in the same boat as Pearls. They didn't have a conscious model of what they were doing. They had only done one part of the modeling. They had assimilated it. They hadn't. They hadn't a code for what it was. They hadn't created a structure. Bandler had established that there was something in the language that would give them access to a model of what it was Pearls was doing. So they, he had asked then John Grinder, who was a syntactician and a, 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 a transformational grammarian and a professor at the university, to come in and help them code this. Grinder said no, once he found out it was to do with therapy. And that was just the thinking of John Grinder at the time. John Grinder was, at the time, by his own admission, a revolutionary. Uh, he had joined in that sort of uh, movement in the early 1970s, the peace marches, the civil rights marches, and for his perspective, um, therapy interrupted revolution, uh, was one of them, and his second perspective was therapy, and you could argue that he was right on this, way of molding people to fit the expectations of society and therefore takes away someone's personal liberty. So Grinder said no thank you. But eventually, Bandler being Bandler got him there, quite persuasive, and when he got there, he was intrigued more so with the behavior, because behavioral flexibility that both Puselik and Bandler showed in this, this thought process. Incredible behavioral flexibility, and that's what caught John's attention. And that is really how NLP was born. Uh, that is re how really how NLP was born, because Grinder then mimicked <coughs> them, assimilated what they did, and then step back. By this time, Virginia Satir work had begun as well. They did the same process, and then step back and created or constructed the model. And that's NLP's first model, the meta model, built on the work of Satir and Pearls, coded through transformational grammar. Now, I know many of you know this, but the model with Pearls and Satir was a common function model. Okay, it didn't come from one source. It come from two sources, if not three. Because in those 13 patterns, Grinder and Bandler tested many. They had Grinder attributed about only eight of the not eight, eight or nine of the meta model patterns to both Satir um, and Pearls. The rest they put in there because they had the same function. And at the time, <coughs> using the transformational gr grammar model, they were looking at getting deep structure on what was known then as deletions, distortions, generalizations. Okay, so that's the first model. By now, a little happy crew uh, was gathering in 1970s California, San University of California, Santa Cruz. The interest was growing. Bandler had a group. Grinder had a group. Um, Frank took on a slightly different role, Frank Puslick, a good friend of mine, actually visits with the NLP Academy as well and works here with us, um, running seminars. The th things had changed slightly in the dynamic. It was now John and Richard. They had a little groups together. There were more people coming in and studying. In fact, some of the people who now we now know as NLP names were joining in the adventure. Two books come from that, Structure Magic 1, Structure Magic 2. And then on Gregory Bateson's recommendation, Grinder and Bandler were ready for the next part of the adventure. And that was the coding of Ericsson's work, or the modeling of Ericsson's.